What is going on, Ice Coffee Nation? It's your boy, Ice Coffee Gaming, with another emblem guide. In this guide, we're going to be going over the emblem Byleth, and as you can see here, we have the Sword Boys. Byleth is a support emblem that has a lot of different abilities, and depending on what class type you are running Byleth on, you're going to have different unique artifacts, as well as some interesting interactions between Byleth and other classes. Byleth's main thing is Divine Pulse, which takes a miss and turns it into a hit, and it also scales based off of luck. So Divine Pulse Plus gives you a 50% chance to convert a miss into a hit. This also affects things like Mage Cannoneer and Staves. Byleth also gives Mentorship, which scales the rate at which you level up by 20%, as well as all adjacent allies. Byleth also has Instruct, which allows you to boost ally stats based on the class type. And Goddess Stance, which allows you to refresh up to four allies, as well as boost their stats based on the class type. So overall, Byleth is all about Instruct, all about Dance, and has some support things like Mentorship to increase the rate at which allies gain XP. Byleth increases Magic, Speed, and Luck. Of those three stats, the Luck is increased substantially and the Magic and Speed are increased slightly. So you get plus two luck and speed at bond level 10. This is important because this is before you do the paralog. You can't get higher than this. You also get plus six luck at bond level 10. And then at bond level 20, you get plus three magic and speed and then plus 12 luck. This is especially good on Anna because it gives her more luck to increase the rate at which she triggers her passive. And it also helps her be faster and increases her magic. Byleth is generally good on dragon types and mages, especially sages because of Thyrsus access. Let's talk about Byleth's paralog and its difficulty. So this is like a moderate difficulty paralog. Generally, you can do it as soon as you unlock it, but you might wanna wait a chapter or two until your units level up a little bit more so you can one round more consistently. Outside of that, it can be somewhat difficult if your team is unprepared, if you can't one round, because you only have so many units you can deploy on this one and your units are gonna be spread kind of thin. The objective is defending all these crystals. Now, as long as one crystal remains, you can win. So you can kind of get down to the last crystal or two if your team can't kill as effectively, but getting Byleth Paralog done early isn't gonna be like the biggest advantage in the game. It's gonna help you maybe slightly in the long run. So taking your time, just doing it after I don't know, chapter 16, you're usually fine to do that. Let's go over Byleth's weapons. So on Sage, Byleth gives Thyrsus. Now each class type has a different first weapon. The second and third weapons are always the same. So Sage gets, gets Thyrsus, which gives you magic range plus two and has a chance to have damage, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then you also always get at bond level 10, Varja Mushti, which is uh, an art, essentially. It's like fists uses lowest of foes defense slash res, and also quads as arts do. And then at bond level 15, you get the sword of the creator. Now this is a little confusing in terms of the description, but it is a physical sword that uses your strength, just like in three houses. However, it also increases the damage based on your magic, meaning you get bonus damage and you get plus one damage for every three points of magic. It's also effective dragon, so it can one shot or in some cases one round wyverns more consistently but it's generally a pretty good physical weapon. Backup units get a Blute Gang. So this is a magical sword that has effective dragon and cavalry. Now of backup units that are good with magic, I'm not sure there's that many, but this is what it does. Cavalry units get Arid Bar, which when you initiate grants might plus 50%. So it's a good player phase weapon. Covert units get fail not, which grants a void plus 20 and has two to three range. So it's essentially like a long bow. It also has a little bit of crit rates, pretty good base damage and pretty good hit rate. So pretty decent. It's also effective against dragon and flying. Armor gets the Aegis shield, which gives you defense plus six and res plus three. Also may have damage if carried, trigger percent equals dex. So it doesn't matter what weapon you have equipped while using this. You basically just always have it equipped while engaged. Dragon type gets a mirror, which is a high might smash weapon that's effective against dragons. It's generally not that useful, but you know, it's there. Flying units get access to Lewin, 
which increases damage based on speed. So it's plus one damage for every point of speed. It's also just a physical weapon. So the damage scales based on your strength stat, and then it scales with bonus damage, plus one damage per three points of speed. It also has pretty good hit rate and is generally a decent weapon. Finally, on Chi Adept, we have the Rafale Gem or the Rafal Gem. It makes you immune to crits and effective damage, but as a Chi Adept, nothing is effective against you. So it basically just gives you crit immunity and also can have damage and the trigger of having damage is dex. So it's pretty straightforward. So who are good units for the emblem? Generally, any sage that wants to have access to Thursus is a pretty good unit for the emblem. I've seen some people run Byleth on flying units with Lewin, but the thing about Byleth is it gives you magic and speed, which is something sage needs because it's definitely slower than mage knight. So if you want to have more consistent doubling, giving a sage extra speed and magic is nice plus the thyrsus i think this is one of the best use cases now you can also just use it as a utility so you could use it for super instruct so on dragon type so let's switch to byleth on dragon type instruct gives plus three to all seven stats all seven basic stats and when you dance it also refreshes it not only refreshes but it also gives plus three to those stats as well so there's Kind of like two general builds that are really good. There's like a dragon type super dancer slash super instructor. And then there's the sage Thursus siege. And I think those are like the two best use cases. So any sage unit, you know, it could be Citrine. It could be Gregory, Pandreo, Anna, whoever, you know, it's pretty good on them. And then on dragon types, it's also very strong. So on the topic of instruct, each unit type has access to a different instruct. So I'll just go over them quickly. Uh, backup gives plus four strength, and that's all it gives. Cavalry gives plus 10 dex. Covert gives speed plus five, which is pretty nice, you know, giving a bunch of people speed plus five. Armored gives defense plus five. Flying gives res plus five. Mystical gives magic plus four. Chi Adept gives luck plus 10. And then for the goddess dance, all of those stats are what is applied. So backup gives strength on dance, cab gives dex, covert gives speed, armored gives defense, flying gives res, mystical gives magic, and chi adept gives luck. And that's that's literally all the type bonuses. So this is one of the few emblems where every single class, it's not necessarily a type bonus, it's more like a function, right? So like it's not really a type bonus that instruct does something, right? It's really just what it does on that class. So it's really just like type casting more so than a type bonus because a bonus is like, you know, if instruct did effect one and then also gave you bonus two, you know, or bonus like effect A and bonus B and then adds them, that's one thing, but it's, it's just how it functions. So it's very straightforward. So what are good passives to unlock on Byleth? Byleth has some of the most situational passives in the game, some of which are borderline useless. Uh, the luck plus is only really good on units like Anna who are trying to go for gold farming or to trigger luck. Outside of that, it doesn't really do much. I mean, it still has the stat increases of luck, which is like uh, increasing crit avoid. I think it increases hit rate slightly and avoid slightly. Uh, so outside of that, it's not the best. Divine Pulse is okay on units with terrible hit rates or on things like Mage Cannoneer. So Divine Pulse Plus could see some use there. The only problem with Divine Pulse Plus is it requires bond level 18. So you have to do the paralog and then you also have to dump a ton of bond fragments or have the unit farm bond with Byleth. So both of which are either time consuming or expensive. And generally it's only good on certain things, maybe for increasing hit rates of staff bots if all they're doing is just staff botting and they're not actually fighting things because you only have two passive slots mentorship isn't really that useful it only really gives you like plus one to like plus 1.5 levels because of xp scaling so as you level up you lose you get less xp as you approach enemy levels so the higher the higher the difference between a unit and enemy the more xp they gain and as you level up you get less but generally you'll be like plus one level on this Art focus, I would say, is largely useless. Uh, increasing hit rate on arts is not really that good. It also increases incoming hit rate. And lost and found is just a utility you can use to increase support between allies. But now that there are the shared tasks where you can assign two allies to go swimming, do the you know horse maintenance or gardening, 
there's no need for this, so this is just like useless. So of these, luck is situationally useful, divine pulse is situationally useful, and the rest I would skip. To wrap up, let's talk about the Byleth Academy engraving. So this is really good for a few things. It's good for crit avoid. It's mostly good for hit fixing. It also gives you a little bit of crit. It gives you a little bit of avoid, but it increases the weight by two. So if you throw this on a weapon that can't double or on a unit that can't double or on a unit with really high build, then this doesn't affect them. This is a pretty good thing for hit increase. It's really good on things you don't expect to double. So like maybe an ax unit with low speed on their tomahawk or on like a silver ax or something. Uh, for other units, you can throw this on things like a silver lance if you can get the build down, if you can get that thing to like plus three or plus five to reduce the weight. You can also throw it on steel weapons for more accuracy for on bows. Pretty much whatever needs hit fixing, but you have to factor in the extra weight. So it's usually best on axes, to be honest. That's usually how I use it. There's other things for hit increase. So like Lucina gives, you know, the same hit increase, but also avoid and you lose weight, but you also lose one damage. So this is just generally superior. And then of course the Allier engraving is very similar to Lucina, uh, but it's pretty good for hit fixing like axes or something like that, or anything that just is not that accurate. But that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe. Uh, I am going to be live streaming today. So actually, I'm probably live streaming as this goes live. Funny enough. Uh, but yeah, definitely like and subscribe. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Peace.